Hello. <laughs> How are you guys doing? I have this raggedy old blue shirt on because I've been doing laundry tonight. So, I just dropped Tanya off. She sprained her foot. So, she's like in this... She has this wrap thing on her foot. She can hardly walk. So, I took her to go get a... Uh, she got a fountain pop. I got a water. We drove around for a little bit. And now, I'm on my way home to go do bills. And then I will probably come back out and vlog for a little bit. And it is like, like 12.06 when I left her house. That's what my phone said. I don't have any air in my car right now. Um, I'm not really sure what is going on. It kind of slowly started to die over two weeks, so I think maybe it's a leak or something, but I looked and I had put some fluid in there and it didn't seem like it was leaking, so I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm real over it right now, because um, it's hot in my car and it's supposed to be really hot this weekend. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do to fix it. Um, had kind of a really non-eventful day. I got up and, um, wrote for a little bit, and then I made videos, and um, I was kind of waiting for Shane Dawson to post his video so that I could do my video response to it, and then Alex had to work late tonight, and then he went over and saw his mom afterwards. So then I um, got dinner and ate, and then there's this little airport right here. There's like a little plane landing. I can see it coming in real low. Um, and then I laid down for like 45, but Tanya texted me at like nine and she was like, I was so tired. I've been like going all day long just with small stuff and um, trying to clean up the house a little bit and stuff like that. I'm doing laundry and all those things. So she had texted me and she's like, do you want to go get a fountain pop? <laughs> or she just put fountain, question mark. And um, so I said, well, let me come and get you at 11 because I was trying to get stuff done. I was waiting for Alex to come home because I wanted to see him <sighs> for a little bit before um, I left, which I did. And then I went and got her and now I'm headed back home again. And um, I don't think he's asleep because he was texting me just a couple minutes ago. So I thought, well, I'll vlog a little bit on my way home today. I was gonna actually vlog throughout the day, um, but I just never pulled out the camera and did it. I just didn't. And uh, it's really humid here tonight, even though it's not too hot. It's uh, 70 degrees right now, but it feels like warmer than that and it's sticky. And, um, so yeah, so anyway, that was my day, not too exciting. I feel like the summer is kind of like flying by a little bit, you know, um, we leave for Vegas in three weeks and, um, I don't really have a whole lot to do between now and then, and I'm just kind of enjoying things. Been listening to my audio book a lot today. That is one thing I've been doing, and I read for a little while today too for book two a I haven't read a whole lot this week. Um, I'm gonna try to do that tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday. I'll probably spend most of the day on Sunday reading, other than making videos. We'll probably go out to brunch, and then Alex usually watches a lot of TV shows. He like catches up on his whole week. Um, I watched Shaw's of Sunset tonight too. <laughs> That's one. I watched a reunion from last season, and then I watched the first episode. This guy just seriously turned in front of me on a that a green. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Last night my vlog was an hour and 10 minutes, so I think this vlog will probably be a lot shorter than that tonight, just because I don't want to have two really long vlogs two days in a row. Um, I didn't realize it was gonna be that long. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but anyway, so Sunday we'll go to brunch probably, and then come back and I'll film my videos quickly and then he'll probably be watching his TV shows upstairs anyway. And then I will uh, read for the rest of the day since it's the last day of book two -bathon. And I mean, I'm kind of making a dent in some of the books, but I'm not getting as much done as I wanted to. All right. <laughs> I, you know, 
it's just by the time that like 10 or 11 rolls around, which was like when I would sit outside and I would do like the reading sprints and stuff, I'm so tired by that point that I just really don't feel like reading a whole lot, you know? And it makes me sad because I don't want to like miss out on the whole Booktubeathon thing, but. Oh well. If I dedicate a couple days to it, I'll feel good. I'm listening to that book, The President is Missing by James Patterson and Bill Clinton. It's actually really good. Um, it's kind of, it went in a whole different direction than I actually thought it would. It wasn't really much about, it's different than I thought it would be. Um, and I'm just, he's not missing yet. So I don't really know what that's about. I'm only like two and a half hours into it, three hours into it. Um, like, they, they really, unlike James Patterson, it's not like a James Patterson typical book. Like, the chapters are a lot longer, and there's a lot of background to it. It reminds me, actually, of James Patterson's, like, earlier books, like some of his first. And if you have ever read anything by James Patterson, like, you know, back in the day, he wrote, like, Kiss the Girls and Along Came a Spider and those. But along somewhere along the way, he, like, hired a team of people that do the writing for him, and then he just kind of comes up with the concepts. And I don't even think he comes up with a lot of the concepts now. I think, like, a lot of his books are co-written with somebody and I think that like they came up with the concepts and then a team of people write it and he basically just signs off on it. It's like a formula writing like group. It's basically an industry at this point. He just is like the figurehead name behind it. And um, but this one feels to me like he might be writing the book um, because it's very in depth. It doesn't feel to me like a James Patterson book that every, like, you know, if you read a James Patterson book, the chapters are usually like a page and a half, and there's like 291 chapters. This is not that. There's like 100 chapters. The chapters are longer. It goes really in depth to like the story of like each character and why they are, and like, it's about a president, and his wife has passed away, and it explains why, it explains the meeting, and it just goes into like the whole history of each person, and when it starts, he's going through these impeachment procedures, and um, it's just really interesting, like, how he got there, and, <laughs> but at the same time, you have to remember that it's a James Patterson book, so there's, like, this, you know, like, action element to it, um, which is interesting, but it's very good. I was a little nervous to read it. I just didn't think that I would really like it, but I do. So yeah, so that's about my life today. Not a whole lot more going on than that. Gonna go home and <laughs> do bills, which I'm so excited about. I usually do them on the first. Like I usually either do them the last day of the month before or the first day of the month and it's the second. And so I need to get them done. Tomorrow's Friday. It feels weird. Like, having been on this, like, trip out of town, like, really kind of, like, messed up my whole schedule because um, we came back on Tuesday, and we usually come back on, like, a Friday or a Monday or a Sunday, so it felt like the weekend when we got back, but it was the middle of the week, and then I picked up the dogs on Wednesday. It just, everything seems off to me, so it's weird. You hear those noises. <laughs> the state fair, I think, starts tomorrow, the Indiana State Fair, which is weird because it used to always start on like the 17th of August or like the 10th, I think like the 10th of August or something. And it was the last thing before school started when I was growing up. Now it starts really early and like most of the schools in Indianapolis have already started. Um, which is just so surreal to me that schools like go back start again like in the middle of July I think it's so weird like I have a couple friends of mine that are t school teachers and um, I was talking to one today and sh she said she has um, what's it called open house tomorrow night and I said you have open house tomorrow night with your she's like yeah my new class my new grade and she's like she teaches like fifth grade and she was like yep tomorrow night's open house I was like Already? Like, doesn't that seem weird? I don't know. I just feel like... I feel like 
the world has changed. Like, we just rush, you know? We rush everything. We rush kids through summer. We rush to grow up. And then when we get grown up, we rush to get a house and settle down. And when we get the house to settle down, we rush to go on vacation. And we rush for this. We rush for that. And we rush for holidays. We rush for this. And it's like, there's no just enjoying of the moment. Like, there's no just of sitting in the moment and really enjoying it, you know? And... makes me sad. I feel like life is just passing us all by and we're just constantly in this rush mode, you know? Oh, well. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to... Look at my hair do today. I had a hat on earlier and I couldn't find it when I left, so I was just like, screw it. Um... I'm not gonna try to solve the world's problems in one night, apparently. <laughs> not like I could anyway. Is it weird that I get some satisfaction out of doing the bills and having them done for the month? It always kind of makes me feel like happy and content. Like, okay, I got the bills paid for another month. Well, I don't pay them all in the month because not all of them are all the way through yet. Like, some of my bills don't post till like the 10th. <sighs> I want my air conditioning to work. I keep on turning it on, thinking that like maybe it'll just randomly start working. But now it's pretty hot. It's not hot, it's just, it's not cool. It just feels like air right now blowing. Like two days ago, it was blowing cold air. And then like every day leading up to that, it took me a little bit longer for the air to start. So I don't know why. And everything I've read online says that it's because um, that there's a leak. And that's why it's taking longer, like it's dying down slowly. So I need to just take it somewhere and get it fixed. But the reality is for me, that's like being without a car for a day. And so it's like just this huge burden. I don't even want to have to deal with it. So I'll probably just deal with it sometime next week. If I could take it and just sit there with it while they get it done, that would be great, but. Why am I kind of like hoping that it feels cool when it doesn't? <laughs> Did you ever do that? Like, well, maybe it's a little cool. <laughs> like holding my hand out in front of it. Um, but if I could sit there while they got it done, like in two hours or something, that would be fantastic. But I take it in, I drop it off, then they call me back and they're like, well, this is what we found. And then they'll have it done by four or six, you know, and it's like my whole day without a car. <clears throat> for the window being down, but it's hot and I need to have a car. I should have it down all the way because it's hot. It's hot tamales up in this car, I tell ya. I hope my laundry's done when I get home. I put it in the dryer right before I left. So I left it like, I don't even know what time, but it should be done. I washed all the stuff that had that hair product in it that I'm hoping that it came out like of my clothes because if not, I lost like uh, a pair of khakis, a pair of shorts, two or three t-shirts and a button down collared shirt. And if it didn't come out, I'm gonna be pissed. So I'm sure that's where you guys are commenting how to get stains out <laughs> of clothes. So I will save them until I get the comments that people leave me on little tricks. 
I do get a lot from like the comments that you guys leave me whenever I like complain about something or I say like I don't know what to do about this. You guys always give me like suggestions and I like a lot of times I'll follow them and it's interesting like how many times they'll work. Like the one thing that I do not stand behind though and so many people always say is the, is the magic eraser. Like I don't think that magic eraser works. I think it's a bunch of junk. I don't believe in it at all. I'm sorry. I just don't. I don't think it does anything more than a sponge. I think it's crap. I don't believe in that magic eraser at all. And, um, it's interesting whenever I'm talking about cleaning stuff, people like really believe in the magic eraser. They're like, oh my God, I love the magic eraser. It's fantastic. I'm like, I don't think it's just an overpriced sponge. It doesn't do anything for like cleaning for me. And I'm somebody that likes to clean. So, you know, like I, you would think that I would enjoy that, but I don't. I just, it doesn't, it's junk <laughs> to me. Sorry, it just is. I took a nap with the dogs tonight and they were so cute. One of them, I don't know who it was, I thought it was Pee Pee, but then he like sat up in bed. One of the, it must have been Tucker, was like snoring so loud. Our dogs have never snored. And one of them was like snoring really loud. And um, it was so funny. And like, I thought at first maybe it was Pee Pee, but it sounded like, it sounded like Tucker. And um, Pee Pee, all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I can see like a little bit of light from downstairs. And he like, some weird smell outside, I smell all of a sudden. And Pee Pee just like shot his head up and I can see his little ears standing up. And he was probably like, who is snoring? It was cute though. He's so funny. Sometimes I think it's weird driving down these streets. Like my aunt, you know, she lived like, literally like a block over from like when I was growing up. My aunt, my cousin, my uncle lived like a block over from where I live now. So it's weird sometimes driving down these streets and I used to drive with my mom when I was a little kid, you know, to come over here. And now they're my streets. That song my mom used to sing back in the day. James Bing dun, 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 dun. His name is my name too. Whenever we go out, the people always shout singing John Jacob Jacob John Jacob Jinkle Miner Smith. Da, 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 da. <laughs> this is something like that. Did I get it completely wrong? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Nobody cares. Where's my door? Fence opener. Oh, it's me. <laughs> my camera. I was like, where's my opener? It's behind my camera. I'm so technological with my devices that I have a, uh, I have the fence opener <laughs> behind my camera so that it doesn't see because it already moved. The one thing I don't like about this camera is that it doesn't show how much battery I have left. It just all of a sudden comes on when there's no battery left. I don't know. I should take it in and charge the battery for just a second while I'm doing the bills. I need to get a new battery for this thing. Oh, they're open right away. Who knew? All right, you guys. Well, I will be back in just a little while. All right. Are we ready? <laughs> I just went home and did all the bills for the month. I feel a little bit better. I feel better because I got them paid. I feel not better, <laughs> not better. I feel uh, because I don't have any money <laughs> now for the rest of the month, but you know, at least all the bills are paid. That's a good thing, right? And then I can, I have a little bit extra that I can get my air conditioning fixed because I also have my car fund, of which I just spent money out of there. It's just always, is it just always something? It reminds me of that Gilda Radner book do you know who Gilda Radner is? She's like one of my favorite comedians of life. She did like Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana, and um, she was married to Gene Wilder and she got cancer and passed away. And she was just, she wrote a book and I read it like, I think it came out like maybe when I was like in college or late high school. My mom got it and I read it and it was called It's Always Something. And it was actually a line from, I think, Rosanna or Rosanna Dana, because she'd say, it's either this or it's that. It's always something. <laughs> and it's true. It's like, that's kind of life. And once you accept that, I think that there's always going to be something, you know? It's like, so get the air conditioning fixed, then what is it, you know? 
they're just like the little burdens in life, you know? I'm just glad today that I have the money to take care of the things that I need to take care of. I mean, there are times in the past when I just, I didn't, and I didn't know what I was gonna do, you know? When I moved into my condo, I remember, um, well, there's been two times that Alex and I have really struggled in the last 10 years. One was we moved into the condo, I think it was around like October-ish that we moved in. And before, yeah, because that's when my lease was up, was in October. Before then, I was staying back and forth between my apartment and my condo. And like when Alex was with me, I would stay at the condo. Um, <laughs> well, I'll tell this story first, and I'll tell you about the dog, because the dog situation is kind of funny. But anyway, um, and like how I really got to know PP and how he became my like best friend and stuff. But um, my water heater broke. You know, my mom's condo, when she passed away, it, the condo was built in like 84 or 86, and really nothing had been refurbished on it, like nothing. And I mean, it was the same carpeting. Well, I don't know if it was the same carpeting, because the carpeting was newer. But it was like, the kitchens are the same, the bath, I mean, everything's the same. We've, re we've gone and redone a lot of it, like the flooring and stuff like that, but, and a lot of the, uh, like the kitchen, like, you know, the refrigerator, the washer, the, well, the washer and dryer, obviously, but the refrigerator, you know, the washing, dishwasher, all that stuff has been updated. My mom brought over, like, um, a lot of the lighting structures she brought from her house, like the chandelier and stuff like that. The kitchen lighting my mom brought, um... In the kitchen, when you see like the pans that are hanging, like that thing my mom brought from her house. The sink she brought, because she had a stainless steel sink and she wanted it in the house. It was just like a basic sink before. So there were a lot of things like that that she brought over. Um, but there just were so many things that needed to be done and the water heater had not, it, it, what, it was bad. And it just, it died one day. And um, it's, this is kind of actually a funny story. Um, I was like down in the basement and um, I didn't know how to do it. Like the, the power light went out and um, like I was reading online and then I called Tanya and her husband said that he would come over and help me. But it had been like two days and we were like, we had freezing cold water. And I was like, I can't, like, we can't continue to go on and have freezing, we can't take showers. And, and Eric was super busy right then, and because of, like, a bunch of his businesses that he owns, and he was like, Peter, I'm trying to get over there, I'm really sorry, like, when I, when I get a chance, I'll get over there. And I was like, well, and he goes, what do you think it is? And I said, Eric, I have no idea. I said, you know, I don't know anything about this kind of stuff. And he said, well, if it's, like, the power light on the thing, he goes, then, um... You know, we might just need to relight that. It might have just gone out. He goes, but, he goes, if the water heater is that old, he said, then it, it could be worse than that. He goes, what does, can you smell in the basement? And I was, he go, and I said, okay, well, what would it smell like? And he said, you would smell like, it would smell gassy. It would smell like sulfur. And I said, well, it smells kind of, but like the smell's kind of gone away. And he goes, so it's not down there anymore because if there's gas in the air and you light it, he said, you're, gonna like torch the basement and I said I don't and he goes if the gas is all down there and I was like well I can't really tell like I mean I don't know you guys I don't know anything about that kind of shit right so he goes well I think it would be better if you just waited for me to come over there and I said okay and I got this is who I am as a person I was like hey listen I can fix this I can fix anything I can do it I'm my own person I'm my own person I can do it and I went down there with one of those long sticks, you know, those candle, not candle, like those lighters that have like the long thing on it. And I was like, I'm gonna fix this, right? And I need to tell you, I stuck it right in there, uh, into like, what do you call it? The uh, inside where the pilot light was. That's what it's called, the pilot light. And um, I was like, 
okay, here we go. I'm either gonna blow up or whatever. And I was like, one, two, and I hit that thing and I was like, boom, like that. And I got thrown back against the dryer and it like singed off my eyebrows and everything. I was so shaken, you guys. I was terrified. Well, so then Eric came over that, <laughs> that night and he was like, yeah, like this is destroyed. He was like, you can smell it, Peter. I don't know how you didn't smell it down here. And he was like, you're lucky you're alive. You could have blown up your whole condo. I'm like, yeah, it was stupid. See, you learn things in life that you, you know, how to do things and how not to do things. And um, so I had to get a new water heater. Well, it was like, I think the new water heater was like $1,500 or $2,000. It was something like that. I had no money saved. I had zero money saved. Um, it was funny because I was talking to Tanya tonight and we were talking about like social security and like how you get social security and my mom didn't have a lot of money when she passed away. She had some that I got, but not a lot, but her money was all tied up when she passed away. And even though I was the executor of her estate, I couldn't really do anything with it other than like pay bills. So like I, I could have, you know, like, and it was like her estate wasn't closed at the time that this happened. And so, um, I could have paid for it out of there, but there really wasn't any money in the estate at that time. Like it just was a mess. So anyway, but I was telling Tanya tonight, I had forgotten about this that like, so my mom got her first, my aunt figured out how my mom could get her first social security check in May. Cause she didn't know like how my mom was gonna pay her bills. Like nobody really understood any of anything to do with my mom's money stuff when she passed away. Um, like it would not surprise me and I would have been notified by now through banking statements or something I'm sure. But if my mom had money out there somewhere that I was not aware of, like that would not surprise me one bit because when she passed away, she had like so many different accounts. She had her money in all kinds of different things. And that was part of what the complication was. It was just such a mess. And um, so she got her first check, Social Security, for that month in May. And it was like to pay the bills, like the mortgage, you know, all the bills in the house. Because I couldn't financially at that time pay two different bills. One for my apartment and one for her more. I mean, I couldn't do that. Like, I, I mean, I didn't have that kind of money. I, you know, I just, I've never had that kind of money in my life. And, um, you know, so she got her check and I paid all the bills. I paid the mortgage and I paid the utilities and I paid the cell phone and I paid everything because at that time, you know, we didn't know, like my mom was in a coma, but I didn't know that she wasn't going to come out of it. I mean, like this was like the first of May. I think we got the check on like the third or something. I didn't know at that time I was getting ready. Well, I'd gone to, I was getting ready to go to Vegas. So I paid it all before I left. Well, my mom died on the 14th. Okay, listen to this. This is the government. Are you ready? So my mom died on the 14th. I get a letter in the mail. Are you ready for this? In like June or July that I have to return the full amount of the social security because she passed away before the halfway mark of the month, the 15th of the month. And if you pass away before the 15th of the month, you have to pay back the social security. I was like, okay, whatever. And I had already spent it on bills. So then I had to like write a check out of my own money of which I hardly had any at that point to, you know, just anyway, it was a mess. But so that was the first thing. And then, God, when was that? The, the air conditioner and the furnace went out. That was like three or four years ago. It was before I was on YouTube. Oh my God. Um, it was like July, end of June or July. Cause it, this happened and went all the way into August and our air conditioning went out. And, um, it just was, okay, so I had had this friend of mine in recovery for a long time that owned his own AC heating and light vac place. And like he would come out, like if something happened, he would come out like at two o'clock in the morning and fix our air conditioning. He always knew what to do. He kept this air conditioner alive, I'm sure much longer than it ever was gonna stay alive. He passed away, um, he was a heroin addict and he passed away from an overdose. Oh, 
like two hours before I was supposed to see him. Um, he shot up and passed away. And um, so anyway, I'm not in the mood to get real emotional tonight. We didn't have him to fix our air conditioning anymore, obviously. And um, so when that happened, like Alex called somebody to come out there and they're like, your air conditioning's dead. He's, they're like, and not only that, but you need a new furnace too. Like the furnace is dead. So if you, you can make it through the summer, but you're still gonna need a furnace for the winter. And, I, and Alex asked this guy, he's like, can you give us an estimate? And he was like, the guy was like, yeah, and he was like $8,000. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't believe this. You know, we just, my friend, I like trusted my friend, you know. And, um, what's that noise? Oh, that's because I have, it's listening to my audio book. Um, and, so we ended up getting like two or three more estimates and they came out there and each one of them was like, your air conditioner is completely dead. It's completely just wasted dead. And you need a new furnace too. All of them said that to us. So the lowest estimate, well, we got like an estimate that was like a real low. And then we got an estimate that was like, I think like 5,500, 5,000 or 5,500 for a furnace and an air conditioner. And it was like a really nice one. And um, with like a lifetime warranty on it and stuff like that. They've been like a really great company. They've come out a lot and checked on it. And they like, they come out and do free annual checkups and stuff. And so I asked Eric, Tanya's husband, because he's really smart with all this stuff. And he said, you need to go with this one, the $5,500 one. He goes, the other one I don't trust. He's like, it's too cheap. He's like, I think they're low bidding you. He was like, I, you know, I think I would go with the 5,500 one. Well, we didn't have the money. I mean, we just did not have the money. And we had to like get the money, like pool our money together, Alex and I. And uh, it was sliding. I was trying to adjust it and turn it off. But anyway, um, so we didn't have the money. So we had to like pull it together, you know? And it was like a couple weeks before we could get it together. And so the guy was like, <laughs> Like, I thought when we ordered it, like, he'd come out and put it in there. It's, like, very much like funeral homes. Not till it's paid in full do they come out there and install your air conditioner, right? Okay. So, we pull our money. We get our money together. And, uh, you know, like, <laughs> God, I learned, I'll tell you what, I, there are some huge gratitude I learned for air conditioning during that period. You know, we... You talk about taking some shit for granted. We really take air conditioning for granted. And uh, at least I think a lot of us do. I, I did until that moment. I don't anymore. Especially driving around in a car right now with no air conditioning. It's actually pretty cool tonight here. But so we got the money and we like ordered the air conditioner. And the guy's like, well, I'm like three or four weeks out because I have to order it. And then we're like backlisted to install it. And we're like, Okay, and at this point, it was like the middle of July, okay? And it was 90 degrees. And we ended up having to board our dogs. That's how hot it was in our house, okay? Because in the basement, like we have a whole basement, it was like freezing down there because it gets cold underground. And that's where like Boo and Tucker's house is, is down by the basement door. So they were cool, right? And we were having Pee Pee sleep down there with them at night because he couldn't sleep with us because literally if the dogs were upstairs, and our bedroom, like air, the air doesn't go up there very well anyway. And in the winter, it's real cold up there. So when Pee Pee and Tucker and Boo would be up there, <laughs> they just pant. And so we just like put them in the basement. Well. After a week of that, Tanya's like, just bring them over to the kennel. Like, she's like, they can run around here. They're inside. They can, you know, have whatever. I'll just keep them in the house part of it. She, she, like, Tanya's kennel is a house. And then she has, like, a pole barn and a lead. And she has leads. And then the back part of it is a kennel. So, anyway, the house part is where her office and the front office is and stuff like that. And she used to live in the house back in the day. So, uh... I know, cool, right? <laughs> she lived in it. I love that. I love that she used to, when I met her, she lived there. So anyway, um, so she always just keep, she would keep them in that part, you know? So anyway, so we took the dogs over there and um, like Alex and I would literally lay in bed at night and just like sweat. I mean, it was like, you know, we have 
so there's just not a lot of windows in our house. We have like three windows total, and there's no draft that moves through. So we literally would lay in bed with like three fans, like one on either side and one at the end on us. Well, finally, Alex called this guy, and he's like, dude, listen, we cannot wait, okay, three or four weeks. And the guy's like, well, I think it's going to be more like five or six now, which was going to put us in like the middle end of August. And Alex is like, we've already paid for the air conditioner. You know, like we, had, and, like, we couldn't say we don't want to do it with you now. We'll go with somebody else. We were already convinced that we were going to go with this guy. And they were really nice. They were. And the guy's like, well, I'm going to bring a unit out there for you and install it through your window. And I was like, Alex called me and he goes, they're going to come by today. They're going to, you need to be there because they're going to put like a unit in. And I was like, okay, what time do I need to be here? And blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what are you talking about a unit in the window? And he's like, they're going to put like an air conditioning unit in the window. Now, let me just tell you something, okay? If you're somebody out there <coughs> that doesn't have air conditioning and you don't, like, you, you can't afford central air conditioning or whatever, go get you one of these units, okay? I'm telling you, you can get them right now at Walmart for like 60 or 100 bucks, some of them in there. And then let me tell you how much it's worth it. So, you know, our bedroom is a loft. So whatever was gonna be this air conditioning unit was gonna go right over the edge to the downstairs. I mean, it wasn't gonna stay in there, right? I thought. So I couldn't, we had to keep the bedroom doors closed, the doors that we have. Oh, this semi's gonna pass me on the right. <laughs> All right, dude. So anyway, um, so the guy's up there working, and he's like, you need to just let it sit for like three hours. Don't go up there. It'll take two or three hours for it to like really fill the room and whatever. I left the closet door open. I left the, left the bathroom open because it'll all be like upstairs in that part then, and then it won't go downstairs. I'm like, okay. And I had seen him kind of working. He had this tube from outside, and it was all like duct taped and all this huge unit that was sitting on like the floor and it just was, I was like, this is bullshit. Like it is not gonna work. And so I left after he left and I came back home and it was hot as sin in our house. It was so hot. And I went upstairs and I mean to tell you, it was frigid cold. I called Alex, I was like, oh my God, it feels so good. We slept so well that night. Oh my God, it was so fantastic. It was. This is so fantastic. And then it was like four or five weeks later they came out, which we didn't care at that point because we had air conditioning in that room. And the down, our downstairs never really gets that hot. Um, I mean, it does, but it not, not as hot. I mean, upstairs it is like, ugh. So anyway, they came and they fixed it. And they put in the air conditioner and then we haven't had any problems since. But we've had, those were two like major problems that we had. And at that time, I didn't have the savings that I have now, you know? Um, and the savings that I did have, I was afraid to touch because I didn't know if something was going to happen that I was going to need that savings there, you know? Like, that's part of my fear sometimes in touching savings is, well, sure, I have it. But what if I go take it all out or take some of it out and then I need it, not for an air conditioner, okay, but for like a roof that falls in I and mean, we got homeowner's insurance, but you know what I'm saying, like, or a health concern or issue, like, I, I can live without air conditioning, I can't live without something medical, you know what I mean? So I think that's kind of like this kicked in fear about, um, what do you call it, uh, the savings stuff, but... I think that's a reason why it's important to have savings. Anyway, I don't even know how I started talking about all that, but. Well, I was talking about doing the bills and then, you know, I, I think that's why I do feel good like when I get the stuff paid at the end of the month because, you know, it's funny today. Uh, so like our gas bill was like, Twenty dollars, but not yeah, twenty dollars, twenty-two dollars less than what it usually no, twelve dollars less than what it usually is. But it's always the same amount of money, right? And I noticed it, and, I, and it's never that expensive anyway. But I was like, this is crazy, and I was like, I wonder why it went down. And you know, we've like the last couple years, we've just been really smart. Like we like we use those like certain those those light bulbs. Well, that's made our. I'll tell you that has really helped our electricity bill go down. When I'm not in my office, and I know I'm not gonna be in there for a couple days, like on the weekend, I turn the air air conditioning up to like 76. And uh, 
like that is like really depleted my uh, electricity bill in my office. You know, there's a lot of ways to save money. We could get rid of cable, but we love it. I mean, we really do use cable a lot. Um, I don't think we need the cable that we have, but I keep messing with this camera because this thing slides behind here. And every time I do, I hit the, I'm not used to it yet. Um, anyway, yeah, money issues, I guess. I don't know what I was talking about. But um, I think that's why I do feel good when I get the bills paid at the end of the month because then I don't have to worry about stuff as much, you know? Like, and I don't want to worry about stuff. I don't want to be stressed out about money all the time, but... This is kind of a shift in the conversation, but... I have a friend of mine, and um, she is Jewish. And her whole family is, like, very involved in the temple that they go to. And she posted this story, or she posted this picture, and then this attached the news story to it. I just like, I'm not telling anybody how to think, okay, or what to believe in. But do you ever just look around and think like, what kind of fucking world do we live in? Like seriously? Like, I mean, are you ever just like baffled by like, what world do we live in? So, this is a Hebrew temple in a very nice part of town, okay? And they have this huge, like, I guess, it, no, I guess it was actually this thing that was, like, around the, uh, what do you call it? They have, like, this, it's, uh, like, this white brick, not white brick, but, like, stone in, in casement where they have, like, uh, the dumpster and some other stuff. And it sets, like, apparently, like, in front of the temple. Well, somebody last weekend spray painted this like huge uh, swastika, like a really detailed one, you know what I mean? And then like all of these other like things, these, you know, things on there. And I mean, I like sitting all red and black and I'm like sitting there and I'm reading what she's saying and she's talking about like that she has all these family that all this family that moved here from Israel. And when they came, I was almost gonna make a Peter Rosen's video about it. And that when they came, um, this temple was a safe place for them to find community of other people that had gone through what they had gone through and you know, persecution and things like that in other parts of the world that we don't understand in the United States. Yet again, another reason why I talk about the power of a story or the danger of a single story. And then this one congregant, I loved this. I absolutely love this. They had it all covered up with a tarp, okay? The police came out. They, like, you know, yellow taped it off. They had it narrowed down to, like, what hours it happened. Y'all, I have smelled the weirdest smells in this drive tonight. I have smelled skunks. I smelled something in my neighborhood earlier, and now I smell straight up. It smells like pig or cow poop. <laughs> and I'm not by any kind of farm, so I don't know. There's the Nestle plant right there. So I don't know what I, where I'm smelling it, but it smells like the state fair, <laughs> which is going on right now, starting tomorrow. But anyway, um, so they had it like all like yellow taped off and stuff. They were investigating it. And um, and Indi I didn't know this, but Indiana is one of the only states that doesn't have a hate crime uh, doctrine and all this kind of stuff, which is really interesting. I didn't know that. I don't know why I should be surprised when um, we are also a state that I think uh, passed the Religious Freedom Act. So I'm not really sure why I should be surprised by the fact that we don't prosecute hate crimes in the state of Indiana, but whatever. I'm kind of, you ever get to a point where you're just past fighting all that stuff? Like, I see some of my friends get so just bent out of shape and stuff on Facebook, and, I, and I'm convicted too, but I just think that there are different ways to do it than just going off in the mouth on social media. I just don't, you know. But anyway, this made me sad when I saw this, and you know, I thought about, my mom's not, my mom's not Jewish, she wasn't Jewish, but she worked at a, uh, Orthodox Hebrew school in Chicago called Beishakov, and she worked there for several years before she had me, 
and um, she was the only Gentile that worked at this school. And she would talk about like all the all the parents. Every parent in this school had like uh, concentration camp numbers on their arms, and um, that like if she wanted to make cookies for the class, and like the moms would come in and they would have to like wash all the stuff and make it kosher, and um, you know all they were like Hasidic Jews, and so all the the men had you know the side curls, and um, the boys and the girls were separated in classes. And she said, you know, like, the boys' names were things like, I mean, very Hebrew names, like David, and the girls' names were like Rockle. And um, my mom just totally fell in love with the culture. You know, she thought it was so beautiful and so pure. And um, my mom had a lot of appreciation in her life for the purity of kind of, like, religious community. Like, my mother, like, there were other, like, faiths that she... There were pieces of it she thought were really, you know, beautiful. Towards the end of her life, she was very attracted to Buddhism and things like that. She always kind of had been. Um, but, like, towards the end of her life, she really... Anyway, so I'm, like, thinking about this as I'm reading this. And I'm reading this article that the Indianapolis Star put out. And they're talking about it. And now the police have it narrowed down and blah, blah, blah. And then they get to this part where they said that this congr congregant, this woman... Like, it had been covered by this huge tarp so that people couldn't see it. And that she came out and she pulled the tarp down. And they asked her why she took it down. And she said, I'm not afraid. She said something to the degree. I wish I had the, I could read it because um, this is where I was going to do it in my article. And this is where it's like you don't back down from hatred. She said, I'm not going to be afraid to show somebody else's hatred. Why should we hide from their ignorance and hatred. This is their doing, not ours. She said, I'm not gonna, I'm not afraid of that. She said, but let them come out, not with cans of spray paint, but to our face and have them say what they have to say to our face. And she said, we've gone through a lot to stand here and hide behind a tarp and I, and I refuse to do it. And I was like, oh my God, like, all right, you know, like, I respect that. I mean, I really do, you know, it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not afraid of you. Like, and, um, It made me think a lot about when I was being bullied when I was growing up. And it's like, I was so afraid of, and, and I have felt this at other times in my adult life. I was so afraid of the repercussions and I was so afraid of what was going to happen next that I just backed down and kind of gave in to the bully, if that makes sense. Because I was constantly looking around, like, when's it gonna happen next? When's it gonna happen next? What's gonna happen? I was frantic, I was anxious all the time. At home with my friends, outside of school, I was fine, but at school, I was a nervous wreck all the time, you know? Which I really think had a lot to do with my drinking and my drugging. Because I was so terrified of, when's the next attack gonna happen, you know? And, and that's where, like, bullies and aggressors and, uh, people that are full of hatred, they they find their power, you know? Not necessarily in the action, but in the fear. If they can rule you by the fear, then they rule you. So, it's scary, you know? It's like, when you grow up in that environment, you don't know when it's gonna happen next, and you don't want it to happen, and you're doing anything you can to prevent it to happen, and you're like, you realize, I don't have any control over this anyway. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. And then you just live in fear for the next attack, you know? And so when I read this, that this woman said this, I was like, all right, you know, like, no, we're not afraid of you. I like that, you know? And you don't have to do that in an aggressive or angry or hateful way. You don't ever have to say that. You can just say, I know who I am, and this is about you, not me, and show your face. <laughs> you know, don't do it between 12.30 and 2 a.m. on a Friday night. It's probably a bunch of kids anyway, you know? And, um, I mean, I don't know why I say that, but... It's sad, isn't it? The, the world that we live in. I can get real sad if I start thinking about all the stuff that happens and all the, you know, the ignorance and based on oppression in our society. But I think it's changing. I think we've taken some steps back in the last couple years, but I think 
over time. I think I, I think I think the world is always, you know, uh, two steps forward, three steps back. I, I just really do believe that, you know, like, and I look at when I was in high school and we were. I mean, Alex and I had a very interesting conversation when we were on, you know, this trip about would we have come out like when we were in high school? And Alex kind of was like he dated a couple guys when he was in high school, but he wasn't out. I think I would. You know, I think if I could go back, I would be out because it wouldn't have changed anything. Those people that were going to beat my ass or harass me, they were beating my ass and harassing me anyway, you know? So it wouldn't have changed anything. I don't think I would have gotten any more hatred than I got. I think I may have found more support. But at that time in my life, I wasn't really a trailblazer. I wasn't somebody that... You know what I mean? Like, I was never a big, you know, take one for the team. I was scared. I was terrified of what would happen, you know? It was just enough for me to get through a day of school. And literally, I, I, don't, I think when people, I say that, people don't really get it. It's like, okay, you know, four years of high school, three years of middle school, you know, and five years of elementary school every day being afraid to go to school. Every day. Every day. Not knowing what's going to happen. And when I was in high school, it was worse because it, they upped the ante. You know, it was then very physical. It was very aggressive. So, but I'm here. I'm here. And you're here. And we're all here. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to get off here. I love you. And um, I, that was kind of all over the place, wasn't it? And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.